The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Shred it to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Never we may realize in our lives the truth of Bible doctrine, dear brethren. The positive end as well as the negative end claimed by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ during the period of the prophets of Israelites. The instructions given to them if they would walk positive, what would be the blessing? The cursings that have been given to the Israelites, if they would fail to walk in the word of the Lord, what would be their fate in the five cycles of discipline and the extermination of them permanently in AD 70 till to the point of the rapture? No, Israel will be again a client nation to Jehovah. But prior to that, our Lord claimed in Jeremiah 5, Verse 30 and 31. A great truth of all time. A simple quote in verse 30. The KJV tells, A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. But the original Hebrew tells, Desolation and horrible thing she has become in the land. How we can explain this category, Desolation and horrible thing. What is the dissolution and the horrible thing that has become in the land? Today, if you could look those things, it is not the idol worship. It is a rejection of Bible doctrine, Bible teaching in the pulpits. And in the verse 31, the further prophet writes, out of the ministry of Lord the Holy Spirit, the prophecy, the prophecy in the falsehood, and the priests, they are holding away on hands of them, and the people of me, they love not because of the things, but they are lasting to do for their own end. The KJV translation is, the prophets prophecy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their own means, and my people love to do it so, and what will you do in the end thereof? Dear brethren, unturned unless, the prophets deal correctly as per in the Old Testament time, and the, priest, and the priests bear the rule of God's will, the people will never hate such kind of a man. As they hated Jeremiah, as they hated Malachi, the last prophet, as they hated any one of the prophets who could stand before the king and tell the truth, they were even rewarded by being slapped on their face. But if the people love you, you take it for the granted that you're telling lies. If the people really love a prophet, they would really change their corrections and get back to the knowledge of Christ and repent to the growth of Bible doctrine. And if they fail to look into the correction of the knowledge in Bible doctrine, dear brethren, then take it granted they're hating you for the truth what you tell. And they fail to get their deeds to be taken care in the light and correct their evil deeds and get back to the path of lightness rather than walking in darkness. So this is a dissolution and horrible thing in the field that is happening in the land where we are going through. Today, if you could consider the prophets who have been no longer there but the pastors, the pastor teachers are teaching lies. And those who are there under their care, particularly the one who have to tell the word of the Lord more diligently from the original languages of the scriptures, the pastors are bearing rule according to their own mind, according to their own will. And they're holding away on hands of them so that the people of them, they love. And why do the people love? Because their carnal sentiments has been fulfilled and they're not in a position to endure sound doctrine, dear brethren. That's why they love. And at the same time, what will you do in the end thereof? Or you shall do to last of her what you will do? If that is a question, if Lord could ask for us, 
they would tell to the Lord, we will do once again isagogical study in the pulpit, categorical explanation of the word in the pulpit, and we will tell the exegesis of Bible doctrine or the dispensing technique of the dispensation in this pulpit. But how many of them are really aware of this pain? How many of them are really worried to look the name of the Lord and his word has been absolutely downtrown under their foot? And the mystery doctrine of the church has been absolutely paralyzed. How many of them they are known of these things? But dear brethren, we do know very well the way how this church is going to end up. This church is going to end up in apostasy and apostasy is a deliberate rejection of Bible teaching in the pulpit. So whenever the pastors fail to communicate the word of the Lord exegetically, isagogically, and categorically, take it granted that land is a dissolute and horrible thing, that land has to be totally washed out. And in the land where there is no Hebrew school of thoughts, what we can learn, no proper communication of Bible doctrine as in then and then existed the Old Testament exegesis, that place itself is exterminated, karam in the Greek, or kamarims. They are the priest, they are the priests who are not exactly the priests, but false teachers there. And for this, the heart of the Lord has been paining absolutely for only one simple reason. And that one, one simple reason, dear brethren, whether you believe it, take it, consider it or not. is that you and I need to understand when the priests deal falsely with the Lord according to their own rules rather than looking upon the rules and conditions of Bible doctrine. Till that time there is no proper revelation of the word of the Lord. Till that time there is no revelation of Bible doctrine in that place where the people or the pastors are dealing very falsely in considering to God's word. And the pastors, when they are being not really giving God's word as number one criteria, do you know what? The people love those pastors rather than those pastors who can really claim and teach to you the word of the Lord more clearly from the original languages of the scriptures. And it is to a great fate for us that there are not enough men in the church who can really divide the word of the Lord more accurately, more clearly, more diligently. But rather it is a great pain of the plea of my heart to tell to those pastors who have been already existing to my contemporary period. I leave off all those abominable dissolution and horrible things and the practices of you. And get back to the point of consideration of Bible doctrine as number one criteria and look into the truth of the word of the Lord. And practice to look about this end, how you're going to change. And consider to work what is the desire of the Lord God Almighty's heart upon us and how well we are here to rightly divide the word of truth. How you are going to correct and put an end to apostasy in the pulpits. The antidote for apostasy is nothing but sound Bible teaching has to be taught through exegesis, categorical and isagogical explanation of the word over the dispensing technique of dispensations, dear brethren, whether you believe it, take it or not. Dispensation is a Bible doctrine word. It is found in the Bible. And why you have to fail to understand the dispensations and lead up yourself into astray and not know the truth more clearly, more evidently, more accurately that we are holding around right now in the churches. Why are you not able to understand the simple dogmatical truth, dear brethren? We need to give number one criteria for the word of the Lord. And if you are not giving number one criteria for the word of the Lord, dear brethren, take it granted you have lost the race already. And why do you want to wind up? Why do you want to waste? Why do you want to speculate? With the scientific phenomena, with the vain glory, with the vain thoughts, with the vain methodologies. Look upon the word of the Lord more clearly, more evidently, and get back to the point of consideration what really our Lord desires on our part. The rejection of Bible teaching is a dissolution in the sight of Christ. It is a horrible thing in the, in the sight of Lord God Almighty. And why do you want to continue in that horrible things, dear brethren? 
And if you're not interested to know these things, Lord help you. But remember, where are we? How are we? And if you're not in a state of position to recollect, to remember, and to understand, and to get back straight to your paths, and correct to the thinking of Christ, and to know the will of Lord, rather than knowing our own will, and rather dealing falsely with our Lord, it is better for us to stay back with Jehovah for all the time and give number one criteria for Him and get to the point of consideration of truth in our lives where with you and I have been called and chosen so that while we appear at the judgment seat of Christ, we need not be ashamed. And Lord knows how to pay back when we stay back to the truth and look upon to eradicate, to put an end to this dissolution and horrible thing that is taking place in our pulpits. To put an end is nothing but once again start the ice concept, isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word over the dispensing technique of dispensations. And we do know there are not enough men who can understand the doctrine what I'm communicating because the doctrine that we communicate requires the mental ministry of Latgar, the Holy Spirit, to be understood. And if they're not capable of understanding it, Lord, help them. In the next day, we shall continue our discourse. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with thee through thy word. We pray that Latgar, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge our in Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.